Hi everyone, uh, thanks for joining in for today's session. Uh, so I am Krishan and I work with Dell Technology as Senior Engineering Manager. And along with me today, Abhin Balud, who is a Senior Principal Engineering, is talking about the Pravega. So before, before I dive, dive into a uh, presentation today, uh, this is important to set a context. What will be your takeaway from the today's meeting? So basically, in today's session, your takeaway would be to think about the streaming storage system for your streaming data. So that will be your takeaway for, for today's session. And hope you will enjoy this, this whole session, um, which we talk about the stream processing and storage. So Abhin, uh, could you please go to the next slide? Thank you. So massive volume of data. So today we live in a data age. There is an insane amount of data that get generates every day. Data getting generated constantly from anything that we do online. For example, if you are in your day-to-day -day activities and anytime you open a social media, every time you use your mobile, if you use map or you go to the e-commerce site or you do anything online activities like you play game, do financial transaction, pretty much whatever you do online generates streams of data that typically collected and processed upon. So a few years back, number of connected device devices outgrew number of humans in this planet. These devices essentially range from your server, your surveillance camera, connected, uh, your connected car, your home devices, industry, IoT, et cetera, et cetera. So all these different devices are constantly generating streams of, da of data continuously. All this data makes sense out of it. Only if you can make accessible to capture insight and facilitate decision making. So essentially company needs to be able to store this data, process it, analyze it and act upon it uh, and act on it. And, and more importantly, uh, I'd like to mention here, do all this in timely fashion. Timely fashion is very important term here. This could be out and out, out positive for everyone. So if you see, we have around, uh, there are some data which I put it on this slide. There are 2.5, Quintillion bytes of data created each day at current pace. Over the last two years, along 90% of the data in the world was generated, many more connected devices than humans on the earth. So if you see this uh, picture, actually sensors, end users, server, video, these are all constantly producing the data, like sensor is, uh, is producing sensor values, sensed values, then you have an end user updates query log transactions, server is log and telemetry, video is video stream. So all this data is good if can made accessible to capture inside and facilitate decision making. So that's more about the data that we are getting on our day to day basis. So yeah, please go to the next slide. Thank you. So here I'm going to talk about the traditional data processing. So last decade, we're all about the big data processing tools and framework that had came out. The traditional approach for accessing that huge volume of data called batch processing. You, you must be aware about that. In the batch processing, all this data was actually first stored in the database or distributed file system or some data lake. And from there, we have different application that would perform different computations on this data. Batch processing are tools essentially that were built, were built to treat this data as a finite set, finite data set. This batch processing job will load this data, perform whatever queries or computations on it and produce its output. It stored it somewhere, then go back and taking the next back batch and working against that. That batch is either run periodically or they run, they were run on some threshold. But essentially the key aspect is that here was all processing happens against the historical data that was already stored and they were typically in the order of months, if not days, and, and it was finite data where everything about the data is known and available upfront. This was good. And, but there, there are many huge cases where the value of the insight that you drive from the data effectively drops to zero. The longer you wait to get insight from the data, 
and lose the opportunity to get a potential business value. To give more dramatic example, let's say you are you are talking about detecting fault in airplane telemetry that's there or detecting fault in your power supply plant. So just, just to give you some of the dramatic example, if, if you don't detect, what happened if you don't de detect those faults in real time, that basically lead to airplane crash or power plant, uh, power plant failure, which is really, really very bad. So you want to get those inside as fast as possible. Typically closer to when the data is generated, which is very important. In many cases, the value of the inside that that got from the data decreases with the time. So there was, there was this need of modern steam processing pipelines where you are processing data in real time. And that's where we are today in this session. So that talk about the traditional data processing. So uh, Abin, could you please go to the next slide? Thank you. So as I said, uh, so we have we need a kind of modern stream pi processing pipeline. So there is, there is a huge paradigm shift uh, that has happened in the last uh, data pro in the, in the data processing world. It's a completely shift of uh, paradigm. You try to extract insight from the data in motion. Data is continuously coming, and you are trying to extract an insight from the data. It means it means essentially is. You try to gain insight from the data as it's produced and you don't let it get accumulated, get batched and do a batch processing later. Where you would be reacting to the fault rather than proactively trying to mitigate the risk. So some of the characteristic of streaming data is, streaming data is continuous. It's coming in continuously, as I said, you could have a thousands or millions of source generating those data constantly and your stream processing engine must react to it and process it. That is very important that data is uh, coming continuously and you have a uh, stream processing engines, they must react and process about the data in motion. The data is unbounded. There is a no known end of the data. So data is continuously coming 24 into seven and there is a known, uh, uh, no, no uh, it's a known end of the data that when it's going to get over. Unlike with the batch processing where, the f where we fix the batch, process against that, what, what we know, what you know, data is finite. So that's the difference. So essentially, if you think about it, batch processing was processing the data, which was sitting at rest. And it was actually applying the queries, computations on the data. So data was sitting at the rest, and then you have uh, queries, you have computations that you apply on top of the data. Whereas streams processing sort of flip this complete approach. It says data is no longer static. Data is dynamic, which is coming continuously. Whereas your queries, your computations, it is static. So your application logic, your analytics, your queries are deployed and data just flow through it continuous fashion and all insights are produced from that. If, if you have compared batch processing versus stream processing, the biggest differentiator is latency. You get insight in real time with stream processing and batch processing is, is, is a reactive, whereas a stream is kind of proactive approach. So uh, as I wrote, data is continuous, unbounded, real, uh, real time and near real time processing of, of data at it arrives. So that's about stream data processing. So Abin, could you go to the next slide? Thank you. So. In the next, next slide, uh, in this slide, we are going to talk about modern data processing streams. So uh, let's look at some of the stream processing data characteristics. The streaming data that you have, it's a data in motion. The characteristic are around four Vs, said uh, volume, velocity, variety, and variability. So well, volume, as its name suggests, it's a huge volume of data, data that we have to process. Velocity, how fast the data is coming in. Variety is more about heterogeneity of the data source. You could have a different kind of devices that are generating the data. So imagine an IoT setup where you have you you got different sensors and at different places. 
uh, you got different sensor and different places you have you have deployed sensor from different oem that generates a different matrix maybe some fields are same but some fields are missing in some sensors versus the others different versions different mix and models could result in different type of data being generated and and the and the kind of data source that we spoke of we could have data being uh, uh, data being from different system and you want infrastructure that should support all variety of the cases so all type of data that you are you are getting you should have an infrastructure that should support about that so that talk about variety when we talk about variability how much variability is there in the rate in which the data is coming in there could be depending on your example use cases you could have a data either coming in a constant stream or some producer could produce in batches so let's talk about the variability then you have uh, stream analytics where, where insights from the data in motion possibly close to the event source. Proactive in decision making. We don't need to be reactive. We need to be proactive in the decision making. Integrate real time data with predictive model to gain insight. So, so that, that's, uh, that's more about uh, stream analytics. So Abhin, could you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. So yeah, stream analytics. So uh, if you see in this, in this slide, we have multiple data source and we have multiple tail data, historical data, reprocessing, index view, and table view. So you have different data source generating a data here. So maybe, maybe it could be video, it could be sensors, it could be the log. So you have a different data source that is continuously producing the data. There could be different stream processor uh, processing those data. So you have a multiple stream processor that takes some, some, some takes a sensor data, some takes a video. So you have multiple stream processors are running to processing those data. There could be, they could, they, those processor could be interested to read the, read the real time data. So somebody said, okay, well, I'm interested to read the tail data and make insight out of it. Some says, okay, I want to read historical data to make an insight out, out of it. Somebody wants to reprocess the uh, data produced by the different source. You want to have a uh, index all the data which is coming in or you have a table view where you can you can have those data so so different stream processor is processing different type of needs so sometimes raw streaming data has little value without historical con context because sometimes happen your real time data is coming but you need uh, to mix up with the historical data to make some insight out of it so that's where uh, we talk about there can be change to sources or change to the data rate maybe the one of the stream which was a stream processor which were handling a uh, sensor data now they want to handle a video data so there could be a changes of source or changes uh, to a data rate the the kind of uh, the, the the rate at which the data is coming that could be changed points to a uh, storage for the streaming application traditional storage system do not provide the right abstraction so so that's about stream analytics so abin please go to the next slide thank you so stream processing infrastructure so we we have we have looked at traditional data processing we have looked at the stream data processing how that is changing uh, the way of making an insight out of the data with the stream data processing so now to support as i said uh, to provide a heterogeneity of the uh, of the sources you have multiple sources so the thing is what what is the infrastructure need to have have those kind of data to be handled properly so so what we need better system and architecture so decouple producer and consumers by ingesting data into a storage layer. A scale out architecture to handle millions of producer producing the billions of events. So analyze real time and historical data sent in the system. So we need to have this kind of better system and architecture. Requirement from the storage layer where you are, uh, you are moving your data to. So what would be the requirement? It should be volume, unbounded stream storage, same performance for real time and historical data. They need to have that kind of support for the storage layer. Velocity, low latency read and writes with the high throughput. So always as low as possible, we need to have a latency and we need to have a high throughput. Variability, where we talk about the elasticity, react to the variability in, in rates of traffic. Variety is on a structure where you have a different variety of data. So that talks about the requirement from storage layer. Uh, processing requirement where we have a event driven, uh, we need to have a strong consistency in ordering guarantee. 
support for windowing and exactly once uh, uh, once processing so we need to have uh, this kind of stream processing infrastructure supported that can support uh, to to get insight out of the real time data so with that i would like to hand over to abin abin uh, who is a senior principal engineer and he will talk about the pravega so abin over to you and can you please move to the next slide thank you and uh, you can go over from there yeah uh, thanks Kishan. Yeah, thanks for the talk on the evolution that we have seen in the streaming world and uh, what is it that we seek out of uh, stream storage and processing subsystem today. Uh, hi folks, uh, I'm Abin. Uh, I'm a senior principal engineer at Dell. Uh, and today I'm going to focus my talk on one such system called as Provega. So what is Provega, right? So Provega is basically a, a data storage, uh, a storage system for data streams. Um, <clears throat> so, um, but uh, you know that the, the definition is very limited. Right. Uh, uh, there is indeed more to it uh, you know, than that definition. So as you'll see in the coming slides that uh, some of the key design decisions that have been made in Pravega have to deal with uh, how to efficiently uh, write to a data stream, read from data streams, and also allow the stream processing applications to, you know, to be able to efficiently process uh, 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 data streams. So there's a whole uh, you know, ecosystem that's built around Pravega that lets you do that. Um, so Pravega is an open source project uh, and uh, has been incubated as part of CNCF. Yeah, moving on, moving on to the next slide. Uh, here we're going to look at uh, some reasons why you would want to consider Provega. Uh, so the first one says an uh, unbounded store for your data. Uh, what it basically means is when you write to Provega, you uh, write to this uh, stream abstraction uh, that is there in Provega. So when you create a Provega stream, uh, what we're saying is that stream is an ever-growing sequence of bytes, uh, right? It's an it's an ever-growing, ever-living sequence of bytes. Unless you have some kind of retention uh, put around put around that stream, uh, you know that stream uh, uh, that that stream will potentially uh, try to live forever. Right? So, so that, that's what you mean by unbounded store for your data. Uh, then you have unified view of live and historical data. So what we mean by that is uh, you must have seen, uh, you know, or you must have like seen in the previous slides about there being two different pipelines for uh, batch processing and live processing. Uh, now, thanks to the uh, stream uh, abstraction that we have in Pravega, we could use the same stream abstraction to process both the live and historical data. And then you have retired parallelism with event ordering. So Pravega offers the ability to uh, read from a data stream parallelly, write uh, to a data stream parallelly, and also offer event ordering. That is the ordering in which you write uh, uh, events. It will be the order in which you you would be reading the events. And then you have dynamic partitioning uh, of data based on nodes. Now, this is a pretty unique feature to Pravega. Um, now, you must have known from uh, experience of working on similar uh, streaming applications uh, that you know you, you define some kind of an upper upper bound on uh, the, the data scale uh, or the amount of data that uh, that you have to process. Uh, specifically speaking, right, in, uh, you might have defined some kind of partitions or shards on your topics and queues in other systems. Uh, now, what we would in, uh, indeed want from a uh, a storage system is, uh, you know, uh, to be able to uh, uh, dynamically allocate these partitions so that you know it, it can respond to the various in, variance in load, uh, and and that's a feature that uh, Provega provides, which is which is pretty cool. Uh, and then we have exactly one semantics uh, to make sure that there are no duplicates, um, you know, fed into the system when when clients go down or the storage infrastructure goes down. Uh, we make sure that there are no duplicates uh, fed into the system, and then high performance and low latency is something that goes without saying, right? Uh, <clears throat> and uh, you also have uh, transactional support on data streams. Uh, there is the ability to perform transaction on, on a data stream, uh, windowing support. Uh, that is create, create an area of interest in a data stream and uh, read and process that area of interest or a window. Uh, ability to uh, you know, store key value pairs, for example, uh, that's, that's another uh, feature. Uh, and then these are just, just some of the, uh, uh, just, just a small list, you know, uh, like the, the, uh, there's more to it uh, than you know, this small list. So, um, we have looked at some of the highlights on why one would want to choose Provega. So in the next slide, we'll look at uh, you know the how part or uh, you know a little deep dive on uh, the underlying aspects of Provega. Yeah. So uh, we have seen that when you uh, when you write to Provega, use this abstraction called as Provega streams. Uh, but how does Provega internally perceive this stream? Right. Uh, that's where the idea of 
uh, Pravega segment comes in. So a segment is a basic unit of storage, can be perceived as a basic unit of storage in Pravega. Uh, also for that matter, unit of parallelism to Pravega. So uh, just like how uh, you append, uh, constantly append data to a stream, uh, similarly you append uh, data to a Pravega segment, uh, to the tail of a Pravega segment. So as you can see here, uh, uh, there's this concept called as open segment in Pravega. So what is an open segment? Uh, it's, it's basically a segment that accepts uh, writes uh, uh, on its tail. Um, right, and then you have this concept called a sealed segment. A sealed segment is nothing but a segment that is sealed, uh, which is not accepting uh, appends anymore. Uh, it's basically a read-only uh, segment. So you see that when you combine these two concepts of an open segment and a sealed segment, uh, that's where the idea of a Provega stream kind of becomes um, you know a little clearer. That is, uh, as you can see in this picture, you have uh, you know sealed segments tied together, and then at the end you have an open segment uh, that uh, you know is basically accepting. Uh, right. So this is very, very analogous to the idea of a stream, you know, which is, um, which is an unbounded, constantly growing sequence of bytes. Uh, similarly, you have like uh, the this structure, this design of uh, sealed uh, segments, you know, forming string of segments potentially unbounded in nature. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, it might also be interesting to know that like now that we have segregated this uh, idea of a Provega stream into uh, uh, Provega segments, uh, right? so segments making up a stream, uh, these segments could potentially lie, uh, you know, anywhere on uh, on a distributed setup. So they could lie on on multiple nodes uh, of a distributed setup. So that your reads, when you read from these segments, or your writes are not like uh, you don't bog down one single uh, node of a uh, distributed setup. Right? Um, so yeah. Uh, having said about this, let's look at the next uh, concept. Yeah, so the next thing that I'm going to talk about is Provega tiered storage. Uh, to help you understand what tiered storage is, uh, you know, uh, we have a small uh, depiction here. Uh, yeah, so uh, on the left hand side, you see a uh, writer, uh, you know, a writer uh, writing events to a Provega stream S1. Uh, so what we have known so far is when you write to a Provega stream, we internally take those writes onto something called as Provega segments, right? So we have seen that in the previous slide. So uh, what is saying here is when you write to Provega segments, uh, the first thing that we do is move all this uh, segment uh, writes, you know, uh, onto uh, our first tier of storage, uh, which is uh, tier one storage. Uh, here, uh, tier one storage is a writer read long implementation. Today in Pravega, it is Apache Bookkeeper, uh, mostly chosen for its low latency writes. Uh, right? uh, so, yeah. So what I'm saying is, when we when you pushing those appends uh, onto Pravega, we uh, onto Pravega segments, we push basically push that down to tier one storage. And as soon as we get an acknowledgement for that, we immediately put it in cache and make it available for reads. Okay, and then simultaneously, right, there's a constantly running asynchronous process that kind of takes all this segment data and moves it to tier two. Okay, so tier two is our permanent store for uh, the Pravega segments or the Pravega streams in generally speaking, right? So uh, this, this is an asynchronous process of moving this data from tier one to tier two. So um, you see what is happening with this model is, uh, you know, all those uh, live appends that are, you know, uh, that are constantly coming into the system are pushed to tier one. You have an acknowledgement for that, and they're basically made available for read. So the live data is constantly made available uh, to be read. You know, so so such a model, if you see, um, uh, fits perfectly well in use cases. For example, let's say uh, you know, IoT use case where you know you have all this um, huge set of IoT devices constantly sending this short bursts of uh, data that needs to be constantly processed and and made sense of. So. Uh, you know something some a model like this fits fits really well where you know where we are constantly processing uh, and uh, uh, processing that data that is coming in and then uh, this model also fits well in use cases where uh, you know you have high throughput reads these are not time sensitive reads so this high throughput reads are basically directed to tier 2 storage you know read from tier 2 storage and, and, and processed so you see Pravega fits both these models uh, both, both these models really well uh, and just a la last note about tier two storage. Um, so tier two storage, as we said, is a permanent store for uh, Provega segments or Provega streams, right? Uh, uh, tier, example of tier two storage could be SDFS or Amazon S3, uh, Dell EMC, Isilon, uh, but there are more uh, cloud storage bindings coming soon. So any, any cloud storage, you know, that, that offers good throughput reads uh, would be a, a good choice for tier two storage. Yeah, so now having uh, talked about uh, Provega tiered storage and Provega streams and segments, you know, let's put this all together and look at a bigger picture of how the ecosystem looks like. Okay. Yeah, so this is a picture depicting uh, a Provega uh, ecosystem. So on the top, you have um, streaming apps. Now, this could be apps belonging to any domain. Uh, you know, it could be belonging to IoT, predictive analytics, and uh, real-time applications, like any, any, any application that, that has streaming needs. 
uh, you know, uh, could be uh, could be the layer on top. And then you have uh, streaming middleware. So streaming middleware consists of Apache Flink, Spark, right? Uh, so these are stream processing applications uh, processing uh, uh, the data that processing the streams uh, uh, in Provega. So you have uh, this Provega client library, uh, you know, that these uh, streaming applications uh, fit into. Uh, so there's a, a connector that basically helps you plug into uh, you know, Provega using the Provega client library. And the Provega client library is what uh, uh, you know, uh, talks to Provega using the stream abstraction, uh, the abstraction that we have been talking so far. Right? So, and uh, 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 you know, just below that layer, uh, what you see is the pro main Provega core. So in the Provega core, you see uh, you know, two critical components, uh, controller and segment store. Uh, controller can be uh, uh, imagined as a control plane of Provega uh, you know, to help you correlate. So we have been talking about a stream uh, you know, uh, being made up of a sequence of segments and the segments basically being distributed anywhere on the setup, right? So where do you think all that uh, metadata lies? So that that's, that lies with uh, controller. And not just that, you know, uh, controller gives you all the APIs on top of a stream. For example, if you want to create, an, create a transaction on a stream, uh, you would be talking to controller. So and anything with, with respect to stream, uh, you know, uh, you, you talk to uh, controller. And then you have the second critical component, uh, segment store. A segment store is basically, uh, it can be viewed as a data plane of Pravega. Um, and, um, uh, all the IO, uh, all the all the data movement that happens, you know, the asynchronous movement uh, of uh, of uh, segment data from tier one to tier two, all that is handled by uh, segment store. That's a data plane of Pravega. And then below that, you have uh, tier one and tier two storage that we that we have seen in the uh, uh, previous slide. Right. And uh, then moving on to the next slide. Yeah. So uh, uh, on this slide, we're going to talk about auto scaling in Pravega. So if you remember, like on the very first slide, um, I mentioned about uh, dynamic partitioning uh, in in Pravega. So let's see, uh, you know, uh, how that works. Uh, here's a small uh, diagram to help you understand how that works. Uh, just to set some context. Uh, uh, so uh, when when clients write to Pravega, uh, they they could be uh, writing to Pravega stream, as we know, right? Uh, they uh, and, and when they write to Pravega, they can choose to write using a routing key. Uh, now, routing key is a freeform string that you kind of uh, attach to the data that you uh, append uh, onto the stream. So uh, this routing key is what is taken by Pravega and mapped to a dynamic routing key space. Uh, for, for the sake of example, let's say the routing key space, you know, is between zero to one, and that is what is depicted on y-axis here. And on the x-axis, you have uh, in a progression of time. So let's say that um, at time t zero, uh, you know all the writers write to segment zero, uh, uh, or all the writers write to stream. Let's say a given stream, and that stream starts with one single segment, segment zero, right? And that and at t one, you see that segment zero is being split into uh, segment one and segment two. Uh, that is, you know, it has segment zero is auto scaled into segment one and segment two. Now that could be happening because Segment zero is detected that you know uh, uh, there has been increase in the load, and then accordingly reacts to it by you know auto scaling into two different uh, segments, and then the load gets divided in the, on these two segments, right? So this this uh, splitting of uh, segments uh, you know could be uh, just could, it it could be going on, and you know, it's a it's a life uh, process. It just it could it could be going on uh, depending on the variance in the load, and then uh, um, you you have at time t four you see segment six and segment three merging, you know, two, two segments beside each other in the routing space merging to form uh, one single segment. Now that could be happening because uh, segment six and segment three detect that, you know, there is a decrease in the load, uh, you know, below a certain threshold, and then they decide to merge into one single segment. So you see like based on the variance in the load, uh, uh, you have dynamic partitioning that is happening here, you know, uh, Pravega, uh, uh, you know Pravega reacting to uh, that variance in the load, you know, by auto scaling, uh, basically scaling up and scaling down the number of segments. And uh, not just that, uh, another interesting thing to note here is this uh, auto scaling of segments, uh, you know, is, is basically tied uh, to uh, the clients, that is clients could make use of this um, uh, uh, auto scaling that is happening, they could, uh, you know, basically know about uh, scale up event that happens, for example, segment zero splits into two segments, they could know about that, and then accordingly react to it. So, uh, for example, stream processing applications could use this feature to, uh, you know, uh, when there's a scale up event, they could, you know, scale the number of readers on their side. So, uh, you know, you see how, how this uh, feature is useful, right? So, uh, this is something that can be used, you know, to, to uh, you know, automatically scale and can kind of derive uh, real time insights efficiently. Right? So, um, yeah, I mean, this is one feature that, uh, the really good feature that one could uh, use in Pravega. Yeah. And yeah, uh, here are some references. Um, 
uh, we have a Prabega website. We are we are present we are actively present on Slack. Uh, uh, presence on GitHub is github.com slash Pravega. Uh, we presence on Twitter, uh, and this is a community uh, mailing list. Um, yeah. So this was just a short talk on uh, you know basically the evolution that we have seen in the streaming world. Uh, what are the needs of a stream processing and storage subsystem? Uh, you know, and the example of one which was uh, Provega. So hope you could uh, derive some insights. Hope it was insightful. It was useful. Uh, thanks for listening to us.